Now, as we come to our moment in the service for our meditation and our scripture reading, um, I want to offer up a scripture from uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 11, uh, beginning at verse 25. Hear now these words. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God always blesses the reading and hearing of God's holy word. A couple of weeks ago, um, a couple of Wednesdays ago, uh, I had the opportunity to spend a little bit of time uh, with our folks who are volunteering for the Wednesday night meal. And it was a lot of fun and really fun to, to experience that and to see how efficient and how fast they move to feed over 150 people. If you didn't know, we have been uh, doing a, a drive-through meal where a, a small group of folks, volunteers, come in and they uh, make meals um, for folks just kind of to replace our community meal. And people line up in our parking lot and then drive through and, and pick up as many meals as, as they need. It's a really, really cool ministry that we've been able to do uh, since COVID uh, started. But I found myself trying to kind of, in the midst of that, trying to be busy somehow. And so my job uh, during the experience was to, to wipe down trays. See, since we started, we have been taking really extensive measures to, to feed folks, but to do it in a safe way. And so we require folks to wear masks and to wipe down surfaces and to keep their hands clean. And so my job was to um, sanitize uh, the trays, which were used to hand food into cars. And I found myself, you know, as I was spraying down and wiping and then wiping the other side of the tray and then hand, getting, you know, handed a dirty one to wipe down again, you know, I found myself being maybe the slow cog in, in the process, but... Um, as I was doing it and I got better at it, I started to think about um, some, uh, some of our own practices that we have been sort of adopting since COVID started. Many of us are, are trying to do all we can to stay safe, to be healthy. Uh, we wear, we're encouraged to wear masks, which is a good thing because it's been shown to, to prevent the spread of, of the virus. We've been encouraged to wash our hands, to wash surfaces, and things like that. Um, our, our own rituals uh, as human beings and as Americans have changed in the last couple of months um, intensely. And I got to thinking about how um, ancient Jews and those who followed a, a Pharisaic understanding or, or the interpretation of the Pharisees, how they sought to keep themselves clean and pure. Uh, through ritual washing. And there was quite an extensive process, both in Torah and in some other literature that was written at, at the time of Jesus, for uh, a ritualized purity. See, because at this time, folks believed that if you were ritually pure, then you had to be really close to God. That was the way that you became really reconciled to God and even loved by God, was to attain this level of purity. And so in Jesus' time, it was often what folks would do is they would go through a, a washing ritual before they would be able to eat. So like if I wanted to eat this apple right here that's on our, on our table, I would need to first um, wash the basin, which I would be washing with. So that is clean right now, but then I would need to take a little bit of water pour it in the basin, and then wash my hands. One, two, 
three dips. And then I would dry them with a clean towel. Now this water, which I've just washed my hands with, is unclean. So I would want to dispose of it. And I would wash the basin again. I would need to also, before I eat my apple, that I would need to wash the plate that it would sit on. So I would want to pour a little bit of water. Wash the plate with a little bit of water. And dry. Setting it aside, again, that water is unclean, so I would want to pour it out. And now comes the apple. A little bit of water again. And then I would want to wash the apple. This ensures that my hands, the plate, the apple, all of them have been ritually purified and cleaned. Now I'm ready to eat my apple. Oh, man, I almost, I almost sneezed there for a minute. But if I was to sneeze, and I, because I touched my nose, I now have to start the process all over again because my nose is unclean. So, you can see how that process was a bit labor-intensive, as you can imagine. If you had to do that every time that you had to eat, there were lots of different rituals that kind of grew into um, the Jewish tradition. Um, lots of rituals around hand cleaning, around cleaning one's body. Um, Jesus interacted with some, some Pharisees who um, questioned Him about that in Mark chapter 7. Hear these words. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Him, they noticed that some of His disciples were eating with defiled hands. That is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and, and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands. Thus observing the tradition of the elders, or that separate tradition which I alluded to. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it, like this apple that I have. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you, you hypocrites. And he quotes a verse from Isaiah saying, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship Me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandments of God, Jesus says, and hold to human tradition. Jesus, when He talks about His yoke, I don't know if you all noticed that in our Scripture from earlier, He says, Come to Me all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We often quote that verse in, in funeral liturgies. But that verse in this, this section of text is really about how we are living out our lives as disciples. Jesus goes on, He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your, for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When Jesus talks about yoke here, He is talking about the yoke which you all have seen um, around cattle that are plowing fields. They often, you, you, you've seen images and, and pictures and maybe you've even had your own experiences with this. Seeing two cattle who are linked together with a wooden um, collar around their neck. And they're, uh, that's done to kind of keep them in a straight line and to keep them working together as they plow a field. One oxen or or cow is yoked to another. Well, Jesus talks about, He says, take my yoke upon you. What's so cool about this word, especially within Jesus' context, 
is that it, um, it actually means interpretation of the Torah. So if you are yoked with a rabbi, you are yoked to their interpretation of Torah and how they interpret Scripture. So Jesus says, my yoke, He says, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And then He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What I think that Jesus is getting at here in, in that section, in this verse, He's getting at the difference in His interpretation than some of His Jewish brothers and sisters. See, Jesus' interpretation of Torah is not based on um, ritual purity or following a lot of rules and regulations. His interpretation, His yoke is simple and easy to remember. Challenging to obey, but easy to remember. Jesus' greatest commandment, as you all know from Matthew 22, is for God to love the world. Or, I'm sorry, I'm quoting John 3.16. Um, it's actually, um, the, His first commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Those two, he says, all the law and the prophets hang on those two commandments. That's how Jesus viewed the world. And that's how he interpreted Torah. And it's so interesting. And it wasn't based on ritual purity, following a lot of rules and regulations. Though those rules and regulations came out of a tradition that was really important. It's important to wash your food so that you don't get sick. But Jesus emphasizes, and what he's trying to emphasize with, with um, the Pharisees around him, is that their interpretation puts those traditions before what is most important, which is loving God and loving your neighbor as yourself. So it's a really interesting way to kind of think about this teaching. And I guess what I want to, in, to ask you today as, as we consider this teaching of Jesus's is what are you yoked to in, in this moment, today? Jesus says that His burden is easy and light, but yet we are still called to be yoked to Him. And so I want to invite you to, to consider what you're yoked to. Are you yoked to Christ like you could be? Or maybe yoked to, to social media? To the latest political tweet or headline? Are you yoked to something that you're addicted to? These are questions that I want you to consider this week and, and also to consider how you could be yoked to Christ in a deeper, more intimate way through learning His way as He calls us to. Well, that's my thought for today and for us. Uh, I want to invite you to, to pray with me as we close our time of meditation. Let us pray together. Author of life, living word, holy breath, we have stumbled through the week and groped our way back to this place, wherever we are. Illumine the steps before us and write your word on our hearts, for we carry the name of Jesus and we walk in the light of his love. Amen. And now in response to, to this meditation and, and that prayer and this scripture, I want to invite you to, to hear our children's praise team singing a great song by Chris Tomlin.